Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship this morning. It's so good to see you all, even virtually um, across the airwaves and so on. Um, this is the 12th Sunday after Pentecost, and in our gospel today, we're going to hear Jesus pose that great question, who do you say that I am? And we'll be exploring that quite a bit today through worship. And I just um, want to put out a, a special prayer request today. Um, as most of you know, I'm from California, and it seems that the entire state is on fire right now. If you could please hold the, the state of California, firefighters, emergency responders, everyone who is dealing with the fire rampage that is, that is burning through the state, that would be very much appreciated by so many people. Um, one of our Lutheran camps in the Santa Cruz Mountains is threatened and we are really hopeful that uh, they'll be able to get that under control so that that camp is spared. Um, it's a pretty dire situation. I'll be posting after worship a link um, through Lutheran Disaster Response where if you're moved to help out with a donation, you'll be able to do that at this time. Lutheran Disaster Response, of course, is already on the ground on the scene in places where folks have been displaced and are looking for emergency help. Um, we're so thankful that this agency of our church is always ready to help when the help is needed. As we begin, we acknowledge God's presence around us, surrounding us, filling us, connecting us one to another. And of course, we do that tangibly by lighting a candle, a reminder of the light of Christ and of our prayers rising to God like incense. And we begin also coming into the presence of one another, even across this medium, together with God's presence in some moments of quiet that we can be together in a time of quiet acknowledging God. And I'll begin by ringing the bells and then ring them again when it's time to begin. We begin this morning with our confession and forgiveness, reminding ourselves of our human brokenness and that God always stands ready to forgive. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God 
through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering song this morning is Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me. We'll be singing some beloved songs today. If you have the bulletin that's mailed out, that's on page 16. And we'll sing all four verses. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Sorry, I don't have it pulled up quite yet. It's getting there. There we go. Let us pray. Oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your son 
that we may gladly minister to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And we hear now from God in scripture and song and prayer. The first lesson comes to us from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 51, verses 1 through 6. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation. For a teaching will go out from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. It will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats, but my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 138. Beautiful, beautiful words um, that, that talk about God's everlasting love. Let's read this all together. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me. O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Our second reading today is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. 
For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ. And individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson today is from the 16th chapter of Matthew, beginning at the 13th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So I want to talk a little bit today about rocks. Let me grab my note here. So here in the Columbia River Gorge, we have a lot of rocks, a lot of rocks, a lot of very big rocks, and a lot of very small rocks. And it seems that at certain seasons of the year, the rocks come tumbling down onto the roadways and we see piles of rocks here and there. Um, that's the basalt here in the gorge. And I want to share with you a picture that is a picture of a rock that we all know really well. Let me get my screen share up here. And we'll see if we can share. There we are. It's working on it. We're getting there. We're getting closer. <laughs> Oop, okay. Oh, something happened. All right. Let me. Just about there, just about have it. Sometimes when different file types talk to each other, they, they don't get along very well, unfortunately. But let's try this one more time. At any rate, as it's loading, um, remembering in our first lesson, Isaiah, uh, look to the rock from which you were hewn, which means the rock that you were chiseled out of, right? And we think of that as God, as um, being made in God's image. So God is the rock from which we were hewn. And um, 
the picture that I wanted to show you that just does not want to load for some reason is um, a picture of Beacon Rock. Right, and this is a rock that we know so well here in the gorge, right? As we drive south from North Bonneville, we see that huge rock jutting out into the Columbia River, right? And we understand that to be uh, the core of an ancient volcano, um, part of an ancient volcano that ended up in that place um, at some point in ancient history long, long ago. Right, and that rock is um, called Beacon Rock because it's um, it's so prominent that that you can navigate by it if you're going up or down river, right? And these rocks are important um, not only for navigation but for our Native American uh, siblings' culture, right? There are rocks throughout the entire world that are sacred to indigenous culture. And the um, there is a rock in the Eastern Gorge and I cannot remember the name, but it's, it's, a, it's a petroglyph of a woman um, who is sacred in the ancient native tradition. And so the idea that Jesus calls Peter a rock, that's pretty important, right? That, that he gets that name. And so when I put out the link for Zoom yesterday, I, I said, if you have a rock that you can hold, bring it today. So I brought this rock. And this is a rock that I used in a, um, in a Bible study at the church I used to be at. And we read a, a scripture text and then we held these rocks and then we wrote on them a word from the scripture that that meant a lot to us relative to to this rock right that became kind of our prayer rock we do that with our prayer stones and the word that i wrote on mine is canopy and it reminded me because there's this little indent on the underside of the rock and i was reminded of places where rocks might jut out and i might be able to have a canopy to get out of the sun for a little bit of time and rocks are are critically important in our ecosystems right i mean what would a lizard do without a rock to go sun themselves on right they're a cold-blooded animal so they absorb heat from the rocks um, rocks are used in building rocks are used for art all kinds of things and here in the gorge our our whole gorge is composed of rocks up on both sides of the river. And so thinking about rocks today, we have, uh, we've already sung a song about rocks, rock of ages, right? That would be God. And we as rocks, um, we actually change, you know, kind of like the, the, the rocks will come down from the sides of the gorge onto the roadway. So the face of the rock then is changed. Well, we change too. We, we grow and develop as God rocks, I guess I would say. Um, and we might start out kind of, kind of rough, kind of like this rock, right? And then as we go through life, um, there's some areas that might stay rough and there's others that might get kind of polished. If you've ever seen a polished rock, they, they just shine. They're really, really beautiful. But as you go on a walk today or maybe sometime this week, as you go along the path, look for a rock and look for a sign of God in the rock. What? Maybe it's the whole rock. Maybe it's a particular side of the rock, but it's a great image to look for God out in the world. And so that's kind of our, our thing today is to look for God in the rock. Okay. Dear friends, grace and peace to you this day from God who is love through Christ our brother. Amen. Who do people say that I am? Who do you say that I am? If you've seen the movie Jesus Christ Superstar, or maybe the production for television that was done last year, 
this might remind you of the song in that show, What's the Buzz? Tell me what's happening. What's the word on the street? Who do people say that I am? But Jesus is interested in more than just his current popular standing. I don't even know if he cares about that. Peter answers him with what is known as Peter's confession. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Peter's not answering out of a set of memorized answers, right? This is not a pop quiz. Peter's answer is, is one born of his time up till now with Jesus. Messiah, son of the living God, is how Peter has experienced Jesus. He has seen things that he never imagined. Keep in mind, of course, that Peter has also spent a good deal of this time with his foot in his mouth. He's kind of a speak first, then think kind of guy, much to his chagrin on many occasions. But this time, Peter speaks from his heart. He speaks from the place that God has inhabited. And this is the beginning of Peter's journey from being conformed to this world and transformed by the renewing of your mind, as Paul describes in our Romans reading. Peter still has a way to go, but his heart is being changed. And as we consider the picture in front of us in this story, this story from Matthew, we look closer and we see details such as the understanding that this place, Caesarea Philippi, is home to a place that is reserved for Roman rulers of the area to both worship their gods and to take, take the waters, relax in the springs that are there. It's like a grotto. So this place where Peter confesses Jesus as Messiah is also a place where the occupying empire claims as its own. You might say there's a bit of a conflict of interest. And so by asking, who do people say that I am in this place, in this Caesarea Philippi, Jesus is making a subtle and subversive move. This place is a context that would refute his claims as son of God, because that was also the Roman emperor's title of honor. For Jesus to ask the disciples to likewise disclose who they say he is, pulls them out of any pretense to anonymity. It's one thing to admire Jesus. It's something altogether different to follow Jesus. So what does this mean for us? Well, it's easy, really, to make our confession inside the church building, to stand together in worship and recite the apostles or Nicene Creed in one voice as perhaps we gaze on the cross on the south wall of the sanctuary. But what about now? We're not in the sanctuary right now. We've not had the creed as part of our order of service for a period of time. It's not a required part, a core part of the liturgy. And really, if we were in our homes reciting one of the creeds together via Zoom and Facebook Live, that's a pretty safe space too. And so I wonder, what and where is our Caesarea Philippi? Where are the places where something else claims superiority? Where it would be at the very least disruptive to stand and recite the creed, which is in essence a long form answer to the question, who do you say that I am? Jesus is the son of the living God, claims Peter. He makes that claim in front of a place used for the worship of dead idols contrast is staggering. How do we represent 
make our confession when we're not in the church building? That's a core question for us in these times. What if we were to ask around our communities of Stevenson, Cascade Locks, North Bonneville, and so on? Who do you say that we, Shepherd of the Hills, are? And how would we answer, who do we say that we are? How would those sets of answers be different from each other? How might they be the same? And what could that tell us about whether we are following or merely admiring Jesus? I don't know the answers to that question because we're asking, we're in the process of asking these questions in our covenant of renewal time. But I think we would be pleasantly surprised in many instances I heard from someone this week that they were talking with someone and the mention of the church came up and this other person said, oh, oh yes, you're the church that has three squares that helps the kids. That's a good way to be known. At the same time, we might also find that there's room for growth and that's good. Places of growth are where the Holy Spirit tends to show up and make things happen. There's another angle to this. How is our understanding, each one of us and as a community of faith, how is our understanding of Jesus different from what other people might say about Jesus? And how does that confession affect what we do as a community of faith and in how we relate to each other. It is helpful to understand that the tense of the verb say that Jesus employs here is very much the present tense of the Greek verb. It's not past tense. It's not one and done. Our saying who Jesus is, that is an ongoing and always developing confession. As the reformer said some 500 years ago, semper reformanda, always reforming, always reforming. That's where Peter comes in. Throughout the gospels, Peter always seems to be under construction, still learning to think first instead of speak first. He's learning the whole picture of what it means to be a disciple in that process, he messes up a lot. And he is the one whom Jesus names as the rock upon which he will build the church. Peter, not the one we might expect, right? This guy who doesn't really have it together. But this is the essence of the peaceable realm of God as it breaks into our world today. It is not about perfection. What would the point of God be? In God's kingdom, there is room for all kinds of growth, all kinds of development toward that peaceable realm. I don't wanna use the word improvement because that implies a sort of upward mobility that would devalue the creation of God that each one of us is from our birth. I like growth and development, developing fully into who God created us to be. Peter has lots of room for growth and development, yet Pete, Jesus sees in Peter the kind of resilience that's going to stand him well in times to come. Maybe it's the resilience born from his line of work, of fishing, that takes infinite patience and the strength to withstand trouble from all sides. He also sees in Peter the early signs of strong speech and leadership. Need to tweak the timing a little bit, but that strength is there. 
These won't eclipse his earlier life or make believe that it never happened. No, far from it. Jesus sees in Peter the potential to bring both experience and growth to the table for the good of the whole community. As Paul describes in Romans, everyone comes to the table with the gifts that God has given them. Not everyone can do everything. You may have heard the old saying, jack of all trades, master of none. If we are conformed to the world, as Paul says, then we would want to do everything ourselves and take all the credit for ourselves. It's all about us. But if we are transformed by the renewing, and I read that wrong when I read the scripture, I think I said renewal, it's renewing, right? That ongoing. If we're transformed by the renewing of our minds, then we make room for everyone's gifts and we celebrate the happy chaos that ensues. If we are transformed by the renewing of our minds, we eagerly seek the answers to the question, who do people say that we, Shepherd of the Hills, are? And the question, who do we say that we are? If we are transformed by the renewing of our minds, we don't fear engaging the question of who people say Jesus is, or who we say Jesus is, or how those might differ. In the final analysis, if we are transformed by the renewing of our minds, then we do not fear what is now or what is to come. That kind of renewing allows us to see through new eyes into the future God prepares for us. And that kind of renewing opens doors and windows so that we might see the places and circumstances where through our actions, we can be faithful witnesses to the God who saves us through Christ, who loves the world. No words necessary. Our actions will say all that anyone will need to hear. When we join a protest for justice, we are proclaiming who we say Christ is. When we join in caretaking of the church property, we are proclaiming who we say Christ is. When we donate food to the food pantry, clothes or, or funds to neighbors in need, or take any other action that benefits someone other than ourselves, we are proclaiming who we say Christ is. And when we share with someone the difference that Jesus has made in our life, then we are proclaiming who we say Christ is. Dear friends, do not be conformed to this world, to this age that claims your worth is measured by stuff and fame. Instead, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. A renewing that comes from Jesus, the son of the living God. A renewing that redefines our lives, that challenges our comfort levels and leads us to the place where God needs us to be. Who do you say that I am? That is Jesus' question for us, now and always. May we faithfully wrestle with that question. Amen. Our hymn of the day today is one of the great hymns of the church. It's built on a rock. Um, it's it's such a magnificent hymn. My mentor pastor's wife told me a story about this hymn, Built on a Rock. 
Um, if, if you have your bulletin, um, it's on page 17. I believe it was when she was in college and she went to Gustavus Adolphus and the community church, the Lutheran church where she attended in that town um, one night, the phones began ringing because the church was on fire and the fire department rushed to the church and the people of the church began to gather their faces lit by the fire that eventually consumed the entire building. And they, they were speechless until someone began singing built on a rock. The church shall stand even when steeples are falling. Crumbled have spires in every land. Bells still are chiming and calling. Calling the young and old to rest, calling the souls of those distressed, longing for life everlasting. And that song reminded them that their community of faith, their work in the world was not built on that building, but on the rock that is Christ. Let's sing all five verses. Jesus to us. 
been an extraordinary hymn. We pray together today for the needs of the world, the needs for one another. Lord, confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, our rock, you are our foundation in Jesus Christ, your son, whom we confess as the living God. Prepare your church for its mission in bearing witness to Christ, both here at home and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call forth praises from the far reaches of the universe to the smallest of creatures. Join our songs to theirs, that a spirit of praise and thanksgiving will arouse us to cherish this wondrous home you give us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. Direct the leaders of countries, legislators and magistrates, mayors and councils to walk in your ways. Help leaders regard those in need with mercy and fulfill your loving purposes in the governance of peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Though we walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve us, deliver us, and fulfill your purpose for us. According to your steadfast love, grant healing and wholeness to those who are bereaved in trouble or adversity or sick and in need of care. And we remember before you today, especially those on our prayer list, and those whom we name before you, either aloud or in the quiet of our hearts. For all who have suffered in the fires in California. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call us into this community, Shepherd of the Hills, in which we, though many, are one in Christ. May we recognize in ourselves and in one another the unique gifts you have given us for the building up of the church for the sake of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the everlasting rock from which we were hewn and you restore your people to joy and gladness. In blessed memory and hope, we thank you for the lives of our beloved dead. Bring us with them to our heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ dwell in our hearts and be shown through our hands. Please share that peace with one another, and I invite you as well to bring bread and wine or juice to the table that we might share in Holy Communion.
Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. God of abundance, from the beginning, you invited us on a journey, a journey of wonders and miracles, a journey of healing and joy, a journey of mystery, a journey full of life and love. We give you thanks for your son, Jesus, who joined us on our journey and who was so full of grace and truth that we cannot help but follow him. When his path went back to you, you sent your spirit to continue alongside us, to empower us and inspire us to continue to be your people. Now we pray that the same spirit will be among us and among these elements of bread and cup, that this ordinary meal will become our extraordinary and sacred feast to nourish us for the next part of the journey. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, he blessed and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. When supper was ended, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them to drink. He told them, This cup is the new promise in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. As we are brought together by your spirit, even while we are apart, we pray that you would unite us into one people who are grateful for the journey, for the community we share, and for your guiding presence. Join our prayers with those of every age so that rejoicing in resurrection hope, we might live in the freedom and love of your son who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All is now ready, both here and where you are, and it is Christ's table everywhere, and it is Christ who invites us. Come and join the feast. body of Christ for you, for me. The blood of Christ for you, for me. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. 
a few announcements before we bless and sing into this week. Um, want to remind you that this coming Friday is the Backwoods Brewery anniversary party. They have a big outdoor area, lots of possibility for distancing if you are able to join us. But regardless, they are having their raffle again this year. And the grand prize is an outdoor fire pit made by, I believe it's Stahl Firework um, uh, in Portland. Beautiful, beautiful fire pit with um, solid steel with venting um, and then laser cut into each end is the Backwoods logo. Uh, raffle tickets can be had um, from Linda Lee and there's also links posted on our website and we'll make sure to bump that up so that um, on our Facebook page so that you can find that as well. Uh, three for 25 and all proceeds are going to three squares as well on Friday. Backwoods is donating um, a portion of the sale of each pint to Three Squares. This is one of our biggest fundraisers. And we were thinking that they would maybe hold off on this because of the pandemic. And they said, no, we support Three Squares and we are doing this. So that is this Friday. Get those raffle tickets purchased and um, support Three Squares. Maybe you'll win this fabulous fire pit. I'm not sure, but... Um, there's pictures also on our Facebook page and um, it's it's very much a good cause. Want to make sure that we know about that. And then there's runner up prizes of um, gift cards and um, merchandise from Backwoods. So all for a very good cause and uh, times and everything is posted on our Facebook page. Um, our Bible study continuing on Tuesday and book study on Wednesday. Um, we took a bit of a break last week. Um, uh, most of us were had other things going on, but we are back this week with that. Um, we have received, I'm very happy to announce that we have received a tech grant from the Synod and Churchwide that will help us to, um, to get the gear in place so that we can do our Sunday worship broadcasts from the sanctuary. I'm super excited about this and I'm very grateful to Oli Helgerson who has helped me so far to, um, to get some possibilities uh, drafted up for that grant application. Very thankful for that, Oli, really appreciate that. Um, so we're gonna be putting that together. The painting of the building is continuing. It's looking great. I'm very, very thankful for that to be happening. Um, and we will be continuing on uh, some cleaning and sprucing up of things through the rest of this summer and fall. So lots of opportunities for you to help there as well. Very thankful for the stewardship of everyone here at Shepherd of the Hills, um, both financial support as well as um, labor support. Uh, Patty Dushino has been taking care of the grounds and we're so grateful for all of everyone's work in helping us to continue being Christ in this community. I appreciate it so much. And let us now be blessed and sung into the week that God has for us. May the grace of God uphold you, the peace of Christ surround you, the love of God flow from you, the fire of the spirit inspire you, and the strength of God protect and bring you safely through this day and always. Amen. Our sending song this morning is Faith of Our Fathers, and it is on page 19, if you have the bulletin. Um, interestingly, the first time I heard this song was on, of all things, the Bing Crosby Christmas album. Um, I never thought of this as a Christmas song, but um, I never can sing this song without hearing Bing Crosby in my, in my head. Faith of Our Fathers, we will sing all three verses.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Wishing good blessings on you this day. us now. Take care, everybody.